Hello and welcome back to the Confidence Show podcast. Today I'm here with Felicia Etienne, an Amazon best-selling author, certified high-performance success coach, and the founder and CEO of Level Up and Thrive Coaching and Consulting. Felicia helps overwhelmed and stressed out leaders maximize their time, energy, and productivity so they can be present and intentional with the vital aspects of their life. Felicia recently invited me to speak at Level Up and Thrive, her upcoming virtual interview series. And if you head to the show, notes you'll find a link to get your complimentary ticket welcome Felicia it's so lovely to have you here thank you so much Rebecca for inviting me on the show I'm super excited to chat with you all about confidence (laughs) yeah I'm so excited it's gonna be good so let's before we dive into all the tips and the stuff that we we want to talk about let's just start at the beginning um how long have you been a high performance success coach for so that's an interesting story there so Prior to striking out on my own as a certified high performance coach, I've been in the business industry for over 20 plus years. So I've worked in that area, coaching leaders, entrepreneurs, professionals as in the high performance coach capacity, but not on my own. So it's been like over 20 years doing high performance coaching in some format with leadership and business as well. Wow, that's amazing. What kind of made you go into starting, like going into it on your own as opposed to kind of working with other companies? So just like a lot of folks, I think is just transitioning in life. I thought originally, Rebecca, probably like a lot of folks think listening here, like I thought my life was just like going in the right direction, ultimate badass. I was traveling for work for on for business. I had the 2.5 kids, had one in the belly at the time. And when I was traveling on business in Dallas, I went into preterm labor and my life was on the line. My life and my daughter's life was on the line. And I realized that I was just overworked, burnt out professional, thinking that everything on the outside was just great. But on the inside, I wasn't taking care of myself. I was trying to do everything for everyone else. And then I started diving really deep into how do we maximize our performance without burning ourselves out in the process? How do we have this holistic view? Because I'm a firm believer that we can have it all, right? Mm -hmm. We may not be able to do it all. And there may be seasons when we need to shift you know, our perspective on things, but we can have the dream that we're going after, but there's ways for us to do it. And that's when I dive a lot deeper in high performance and made sure that I'm just not coaching to say I'm a high performance coach doing all of this stuff, leading sales team, but now I'm living the principles myself. So as I was doing that, living on my own, I realized that even though I stayed in that environment, I'm not going to be able to truly, truly do what I inspired to do, which is to help female entrepreneurs, business owners, coaches, folks that's going through some of the same things I'm going through. How do we create that vision where we're living our legacy, but we're enjoying life, we're bringing, we're reclaiming our joy, our confidence, we're resilient, but we're also maximizing our profitability and everything else, and we're thriving. So that's what, you know, inspired me, you know, just like a lot of people over the pandemic was like, I'm not, I'm not no longer going to go back into that space. I'm going to go into a space where I can truly thrive and help others. Plus my job was in transition. So I was like, okay, do I continue what I'm doing or should I move? And I decided to pivot. That's amazing. That gave me goosebumps you showing your story there. And you can obviously relate to so many women as well, because I feel like so many of us at some stage or another do hit that burnout point. We hit that breaking point where we're like, I have not looked after myself. I've put everybody else before me. And to some respect, when you then start a business, we can then fall into that same trap of, but now I've started my business and now my business comes first. So how do you kind of avoid doing that as a business owner as well? You know what? That's interesting because a lot of us, we go in with the intention, right? That we see the who we can serve. We're so passionate about what we do and we love what we do, right? So we can do this all day. So, and then we get into that same area that we just left work. Now the only reason is for ourselves, which is great. But what I do is creating like systems and routines for myself, I think is so, so pivotal So the first thing I always do, and I tell my clients to do this as well, Rebecca, is to identify what success means to you. What does that vision of success mean to you? Who's included in that vision? For me, it's my kids, my husband. So if that's what success means, how am I going to make sure my plans start with there? So when I plan out my my schedule, their top priority, they're on it. 
They're first on it. Then we're looking at what else do I define as success? A lot of us are defining, oh, I want to be a six figure, seven figure entrepreneur. I said, don't start there. Start with what the life is going to look like. Because a lot of time when you start looking at your numbers, Rebecca, you realize what I need is this amount, six figures in this amount. And I could do, I can live the life and I can have the freedom and I can travel, but really start there. Start with your success. Break it down financially, what that looks like, who's included, what that vision is. Then you start to build out your routines to support that, your schedule, your habits, your systems to support it. That's the only way I can survive, right? I'm not doing this all alone. I realized in the past I used to, when I just started, I was like, okay, I could do all of this because I'm a, I'm a driven person, just like a lot of your listeners, right? I love it. I'm ambitious. I want to go after it. But I had to slow myself down and say, okay, in order for me to really get this vision to where it needs to be, I'm going to need a team with me. It doesn't need to be a big team, but it needs to be a strong but mighty team. So I have two folks on my, that's just two. And we are doing the things we need to do. So they're helping me to create the vision that I have and their visions are getting fulfilled at the same time. So I'll say, start with defining for yourself, not for what it means to me, not for what it means to Rebecca or anyone else, but what is the vision for you? And then just start mind mapping yourself. What does that look like? Who's included? What brings you joy? What does the hours look like? Do you wanna work on the weekends? And it's okay if you do. If that inspires you, that's great because you're gonna be in full alignment. Because when we're not in full alignment, Rebecca, that's when we have the friction. That's when we have the pain points. That's when you're like getting to the burnout and you're thinking like, how did I get here? I've been there, so I can probably write a Bible. On it. It's like, you got to make sure you're in alignment, whatever it's your, for your vision. And then your confidence is going to come along the way because you're doing the thing that's you're fully in alignment there and your schedule reflected, your routines reflected. Because a lot of times we say we want to be here and a vision and everything else. And I tell my clients, let me see your routines. Let me see your habits. If your habits and your routines are not displayed there, you're not going to get what you want to get to. So having all those buckets in alignment and keeping it simple. That's another thing I learned. Simplify, simplify, just keep it freaking simple and you will win. And I have a model that I, that I talk to folks about. It's thrive easy. There is a way for us to thrive easy. And it's all about the things we just talked about. It's about your routines, it's about your system, but it's about you. It's about you prioritizing you and everything else builds off of your vision and then you will thrive easy. Oh God, I love that so much. I feel like so inspired just listening to you, <laughs> just listening to you speak so passionately. And that's something that we talk about quite a lot on The Confidence Show. Like we recently ran a series about like the four principles of success. And it's very similar in like having your vision and then like doing the strategy and then building your confidence from there. And it's, it's so, so true. And I completely agree with what you say about keeping things simple because the, every time I create these massive plans for myself, it feels so overwhelming. And I'm like, nope, can't do it. Can't do it. Don't want to do it. <laughs> so simplifying is so, so key. Um, Seeking approval from others is something that so many of us experience at some stage, especially when it comes to running our business. And then when we try and create our own definition of success, we're like, okay, this is what I want my successful life to look like. But also, what are other people going to think of my success, my idea of success? How can we really stop seeking that approval and instead focus on trusting our own decisions and following our own path? That's a great question there. And I think every time we're, we're learning and we're growing, your confidence will always be shaken a little bit, right? Because we're learning something new. And I tell folks, just take it step by step and understand as we learn, we're growing. And as you're growing, then your confidence is building because you're demonstrating courage. Once you start demonstrating courage, confidence comes. It's just a small action you're taking and validating your action. So let's talk about this. So when I think about this, about the seeking approval, Number one, when you're seeking approval, you are giving away your power. You are absolutely giving away your power. And that's something we don't want to do. And I want to clarify here, seeking approval and feedback is two different things, right? So it's, I'm a big proponent on asking for feedback, seeing ways you can grow, but validating everything on based on what someone is sharing. Like, Rebecca, do you think I should do this before I even start to validate why I want to do this? 
this is my vision, this is what I want, but you're going to ask someone outside of you to say, is this, does this make sense? Should I want this? Should I do this? Or should I put this podcast episode out before you yourself come to the conviction? This is why I want to do this podcast episode. This is who is going to impact. Felicia, what's your point of view on it? That's okay. Because that's you just saying, okay, let me get some additional feedback to test it out on the market. But relying on this, it ties back to our self-worth. If we're putting the decision on someone else and then all of a sudden they're not validating us, they're like, oh no, that doesn't work. Oh no, why are you, first of all, why are you even doing this podcast? You're not even good at it. And then what happens to your self-esteem? It dwindles. Versus when you are seeking validation from yourself because you know that you have done the work, you know everything you have done in the past, right? You celebrate your wins along the way. You go back to, I have overcome this. I did this episode and oh my God, this is what works for me. And now you're solid and you're rooted there. You're unshakable. You have the unfair advantage versus that person who's always going out there and looking for somebody else to validate them. And I think in this highly connective world that we're living in right now, everyone is on social media. Everyone has a device, right? My six-year-old wants a phone already. It's like, Everyone has something, right? And they're at a you know, what a young age, we're starting to get likes, right? Validation, right? We put a post out there. Did we get a like? Did we get a like? We're so hypersensitive to that stuff right now that it's impacting even the younger generation self-esteem with themselves. So the more we help others and ourselves to say, we are whole, you are hundred percent validating for yourself. There's always room to grow because the day we stop growing, guess what? We're no longer on earth, right? We might have passed on or whatever you believe, but we never stop iterating. We never stop getting better. So all you need to do is to look within yourself and say, okay, what proof point do I have? And the funny thing is, Rebecca, our brains are so interesting, right? Our brains are designed to protect us. So our brains will always put things out there to say, oh, no, maybe you shouldn't do that. No, 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 no. Didn't work for that person. Maybe that's what your brains are designed to do. So you have to train your brain by validating yourself to say, yes, I've done this. Look at the proof point. And yes, I may not know exactly what I need to do here, but this is the actions I'm taking right now that's going to get me to the next level. This is the training I'm taking right now. This is the book I'm reading. This is the activity I'm doing. This is the, the stage I'm speaking on. All of those things allowing you to retrain your brain so your brain can be confident with its internal system of validation versus the external did I answer your question <laughs> yeah absolutely and that's so so true and just just like getting yourself to think differently and I think when we can stop ourselves and say like am I asking because I need the validation or am I asking for that feedback yeah. because yeah this is what I want to do and I'm going to do it but let me just like get some feedback because it's nice to have somebody else to like cheer us on it's, yeah. it's such a difference and it really does make a difference how you feel about yourself and I suppose that can really go into other areas of your life as well it's not just business it's like when you put on an outfit and you're like I feel amazing in this like let me t show my friend like oh my god I love this outfit what do you think versus you put on an outfit and you go to your husband or partner or friend like do you think I can wear this like is this okay like there's a big difference and when you were saying that it's like you asking for permission right? Mm -hmm. There's no need. There's no need to ask for that. There's, there's opportunity for us to ask for feedback. And I'm a big proponent of ask for feedback every day, all day, because a lot of times why our companies may not be growing or we're not striving as much as we are, because we're starting to do it in a vacuum. We're trying to do it all ourselves instead of validating it out there in the market to say, does this work for the marketplace? So feedback is good. Yeah. But you've got to not at the expense of your self-worth or your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Completely agree. Um, we, one thing I wanted to talk to you about as well is we see a lot of kind of perfect images online and we're often faced with this perception that everyone else is living an amazing life and achieving a ton of success. Yet it's really easy for us to pinpoint our own flaws or focus on our own imperfections. But as I'm sure you agree, there's no such thing as perfect. So how can we learn to embrace those perceived imperfections instead of letting them hold us back? You're so right. A lot of times when we look around, right, the filtered world, right, everything looks perfect. But on the other side, there's a whole nother story happening there. I think when we think about this, I always look at, just take a look at history. Take a look at the most successful people in history. Most of them have little quirks 
they have things that just makes them different. What makes us successful? What makes them different and unique is their imperfection. If you look at the hero's journey, right? Everybody heard about the hero's journey, like Superman. Only reason we like Superman is because he has a flaw too. If he was always doing stuff that was absolutely perfect, we'll be like, oh my God, it's like boring. It's just the same old, same old, same old, right? But he has his kryptonite, kryptonite, right? So that makes him a little flawed. And the fact that Lewis Lane is the one that always gets him, that's he's a little flawed there as well, right? So it's the same thing for us. What makes us unique is the fact that we are imperfect. And the more we embrace the imperfection, that's where we're gonna have that, that, that way for us to really thrive in everything we're doing. So if you're, for, if you're someone who is just high energy, that's, then validate that, go with it. If you're someone who you have this way of identifying things that maybe other people and you're a bookworm, that's your, prof celebrate it. There's things that you're gonna be able to thrive in, right? There's gonna be careers you're gonna be able to thrive in. So my whole philosophy for, I start with my kids, in, embrace who you are because that's what's going to make everyone else stand up and take notice because if you try to be like everyone else guess what you're going to be boring you're going to just forgettable because everybody else is like this but if you embrace the, the perfect unique person you are Rebecca what you bring to the nobody else is like Rebecca nobody else is yeah. So that's the only person you deserve to be is to be yourself. And that's how you can be able to really take it to the next level. So embrace your unique personality. Embrace the fact that there's a world of possibilities for you that's not for anyone else because they're not like you. There's totally different. Plus, you have authenticity on your side. And there's enough talks out there about the, the power of authenticity to build trust, right? To build relationships, to build partnerships, to really be able to connect with others. And if you're trying to be someone else or you're trying to be perfect, you're not being authentic mm -hmm. to yourself. Therefore, you're missing out on the opportunity to deepen relationships, to, to build connection and to grow as an individual by trying to be someone else. It's ready taken be yourself yeah. and embrace everything that comes with you. Totally. I completely agree. And I think sometimes when we, because I feel like there are some times where we do find ourselves kind of slipping into that mm -hmm. trying to be the person that we think people want yeah. us to be, but people will see through that because you can yeah. only keep the mask there for so long. And mm -hmm. as you say, like if you've got the mask there, you feel inauthentic and that doesn't feel yeah. good. And when you don't feel good, you can't show up as good in your business. You can't show up as well in your life. You can't show up for your relationships. So it's really, it's difficult to embrace those imperfections. But as you say, those imperfections, they are what make us unique. They are what make us stand out. And they are what make us different from every other person that you see online. So one thing I want to just add as you were talking about this, as we embrace our imperfections, it's also the opportunity for us to know there's always opportunity for us to level up in areas, right? So if, for example, one of your imperfection is uh, something that you know in your business that you need to focus in on, right? It may be something that's in marketing, knowing how to have sales conversation, having that confidence, but you just don't, like you're just not comfortable in that space and hard to articulate yourself. It's okay to lean in and to ask for help and to level yourself up. We're not saying, oh my God, whatever you are, you are, you can't change. No, we can embrace some of the things and say, okay, this is an opportunity here. This has a direct impact on what my success looks like for me, what my mission in life is. And if I continue to have this flaw here, it's gonna impact what I am in aligned to do. It is gonna impact my life, my vision. It's okay to say, yeah, I'm gonna work on this because that's how we grow and that's how we get to the next level, right? Mm -hmm. So, but there's other things that's uniquely aligned to us that we can't change. You can't change the color of your skin. You can't change certain things that you, the way you were raised in the past, we can embrace it and say, okay, this, this happened to me. How can I shift it? Is by shifting my mindset and taking the lessons that I've learned there, because guess what? If something difficult happened to you, you can be more resilient than someone who didn't have the pleasure of experiencing it. You wouldn't call it pleasure, but the pain of experiencing it. So there's something there that can help you in another avenue. There's something there that can help someone else who may not have experienced what you have experienced, who can learn from you. So that's where 
all embracing all everything that happens to us even the tough things because there's some things in my life I'm like oh my god I would love to just let go of it but the reality is Rebecca that's what made me who I am today if I didn't go through this I don't know if I'll be talking to you right now today yeah. and it takes time it takes journaling it takes practice but I just thought it was important to put that out there in a conversation that that doesn't mean that we stop learning and growing and evolving and taking the time to unpack some of the things that's going on in our life right and a great practice for that is to journal so you can kind of see the streaks of genius right wow that was a that's tough but I see the genius in this I see what that has led to oh my gosh I see how that can help someone else but you have to take some time sometimes for yourself because I had to do that as well in my practice is to start journaling so I can see see where the, the line were in the sand yeah it was actually meant for me at this point yeah, I completely agree with you. I think uh, that on the one hand, it is great to um, embrace those imperfections, but then also to know that we are on that growth journey and to know that we can improve certain things and that we can always be working on ourselves. And as I agree with you in terms of the journaling, like having space to kind of get everything out onto paper, it's so powerful and it's something that we can do for ourselves, whether that's processing things that have happened to us in the past drawing that line in the sand like forgiving ourselves forgiving the people that hurt us or whether it's just spilling out like I'm really struggling with this today and just getting it from our head onto the piece of paper um when it comes to journaling do you have any specific techniques that you use are there any styles that you prefer so when it comes to journaling I I don't like to be too prescriptive here I tell folks any notebook will do, right? I personally use a high performance journal by Brandon Burchard only because I'm a high performance coach and I go through some of the questioning cues there because he's, he focuses on mindset. And I always think when we're journaling is an opportunity to reset ourselves. Every single day, Rebecca, is a new day. Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity, no matter what happened yesterday, no, no matter what happened two minutes ago, you can catch yourself and you can shift it. Right. So that's what I like, the power of journaling. And I think we need to put less restrictions on people and just say free flow it wherever, whatever you're feeling, capture it. And I love what you're talking about. If there's something that just keeps you up at night or sometimes you just feel a certain way, some some emotion that's coming to you, capture what that is, because a lot of time this is how your brain is going to be able to process it to say, OK, this is and then you retraining your brain when you're journaling as well. Because you're telling your brain, okay, and you're celebrating. Sometimes we celebrate in your journal. For me, I journal in the morning and I just do just free space. I write in my normal book. It's not nothing special. It's just a notebook. But then I just do the Brendan Bouchard one that's sitting right next to me here. And then I can just tell you guys a couple of prompts in here. It's the same information every day. But every day, the answers are different. Like one thing that I'm excited about today. How simple is that? All right. Start your day with some excitement. Someone who needs me on my A game today. You need me on my A game today. So I wrote you down, right? You need me and everyone else that I'm engaging with needs me on my A game. So what does that look like? And then one bold action I plan to take today. That's just to give you some example. So those are some of the things I do in my practice. But at the end of the day, it's also important, and I talk to my clients about this, is your end of day practice mm -hmm. is a way for you to really tie your day in a nice little bow and celebrate the wins you had for the day. And, but also be mindful of the opportunity for growth. Where did you struggle today? And why did you struggle? Was it an emotional, something that emotionally pulled you back? Or was it something that maybe you were trying to get validation and you didn't get the validation, right? What is it? Because that allows you to just journal a little bit, not a long journal practice, could be 10, five minutes, whatever time you have there but capture that because that allows you to release it and then plan your data before the next day right look at your calendar see what's going on what mindset do i need to be on to really support the vision i have for the next day the vision i have for my life capture that better you you're going to sleep so much better that night because you have released a lot of the tension there and you're going into the next day feeling refreshed and then you're just starting the process again you take a quick look yeah i already know these are coming up i need to be on my a game for this how does that work how does that look like for me? What is my vision of what that looks like? And my AEM doesn't need to be yours. It doesn't need to be anyone else. You get to define what that is for you. 
Oh my God, I love that so much. That self-awareness is so key. And it's such a, as you say, it's such a simple way. Like you don't need to spend like four hours journaling in the morning to get yourself up there. Like you literally just take five minutes, 10 minutes and, and have that as one of your practices. And as you were saying at the start, have that as one of your routines that is going to help you to level up and thrive in all areas of your life and business. As a business owner, there'll be times where we fail at something or something doesn't go quite the way that we wanted it to. In those moments, how can we practice having some more self-compassion and what can we do to lift ourselves back up so we can continue striving towards our goals? Self-compassion is one thing that I am so, so a component of. We have to learn to love ourselves and to accept ourselves. So you see how everything is coming together. We talked about the validation earlier. Right. So by you looking for that internal validation, that kind of ties back to your own self-compassion for yourself is to accept yourself on the journey you are. Remember, again, the imperfections coming up in the self-compassion as well. The more you understand that we are on a journey to continue to learn, to grow, to be curious, to have fun on this journey here, the more compassion you can have for yourself because you realize on a journey, you may fall, you may lose your path but you're on it and there's ways to get you back on that path. But it first, it starts with you learning to love and accept your authentic self of who you are. That's number one. Once you learn to love yourself in a sense, and you learn to love yourself that you're on a growth path, Mm -hmm. because if you're on a growth path, that means there are going to be lessons. They're going to be struggles. They're going to be pitfalls. And the more self-compassion you have, the more resilient you will be because you will understand that you have the opportunity to pivot. You have the opportunity to learn. You have the opportunity to let go of things that may not even be needed on the journey you're a part of. But it starts with you understanding that you have everything within you and giving yourself a break. Because sometimes what I've noticed, and I'm guilty of this, so everything I can talk about is because I've experienced it and I've helped other people overcome this. But we all experience, we still go through this day today, experience it. Why do you think we journal so much as coaches? <laughs> because because we're, we're taking ourselves back. We have the self-awareness to say, go back on the journey, right? Understand, because a lot of times we are our worst en- enemy, I would say, in the sense of where we talk to ourselves. So I tell people, be very mindful of how you talk to yourself. Talk to yourself in the most compassionate way, like you would talk to, if you're a parent, like you would talk to your child, like you would talk to your best friend, like you would talk to your sister, your brother, your mother. That's the same level of compassion we need to have ourselves. Not that back talk in our heads, oh my God, you you failed at this. Why did you try to do this? You know it wasn't going to work. All of that just brings you down and it breaks down your resilience and your ability to bounce back. But if you acknowledge to yourself, okay, this was a tough one. And again, you see the journaling practice coming in at the end of the day, ritual happening here. Okay, this was a tough day for me. It was, I struggled answering a couple of these questions. I struggled to connect with my clients. I, in my coaching call today, I didn't feel like it hit the, hit the mark there. I didn't feel like I was able to add the value I think I should be adding here. That's all good because that's you having a direct conversation to say, oh, but it's not beating yourself up. You say, okay, I don't think I hit the ball. So let's let's take a quick look at that. What went well? I always tell people, it's all about that, that feedback sandwich, right? You always start with the good. What went well? Okay, great. We did this, this, and this, and this. Where was the, there an opportunity? We did this and this. What did, what led to that gap in the opportunity? Oh, okay, we could have done this. All right, what could I do next time? I could do this. What could I do right now to, to help solidify this relationship? If you feel like the relationship was dinged by what happened. Now, guess what? You're being proactive versus reactive. Yeah, I can do this. I can actually send them a recap email and just point out a couple of bullets that I think will give them direct impact on whatever we're working on right now. In fact, beyond that, I'm just going to do a quick loom video. Oh, that takes less than five minutes. Let me do that. Boom. You send that out. The person is like, oh my God, this is so great. And at the end of the day, Rebecca, have you ever noticed the person didn't even know that, that you felt this way, right? We're carrying around all of these damn stories in our head that this person feel like I just dropped the ball and they don't have any of these feelings. But by you being proactive, you just put yourself in alignment. You just made them like over deliver. They're like, oh my God, she just over delivered here. So it's a win, win, win. So the practice of self-compassion is also the practice of reflection in the self and self-awareness. I put it all kind of in that bucket there. So what, no matter what comes, it may ding you in the beginning when you look at it, but I'm always going to say, Felicia, you are, you got this. You have everything you need. 
And I would say, look at your badass list. So if you're someone who struggles with self-compassion and self-love, I heard one of my coaches talked about like a badass list. Write a list of everything you have done in that you have done in your life, your successes. Mm-hmm. Just write them down. And guarantee you'll have so many, like you probably have like a hundred, two hundred, a thousand. So whatever those success and take a look at them and remind yourself that you are a badass. You're here for a reason. If you need to do that, do it. And for me, I was in a corporate space so long. So I have like all my performance reviews, Lord Jesus. And sometimes you look at those performance reviews and it could be a pain, but they only now I start to realize, and I went back and read them. They were positives, but I was so driven in my ambition that I always used to focus on a negative. <laughs> like I would just go straight. Where's the opportunity? Okay. What? That's an opportunity. I worked so hard on this. Versus now I look at them and I'm like, oh shoot, that was really good. I was, that was an opportunity to learn and grow. Oh my goodness. You can see how when your mindset starts to shift, you're like, so go back and look at some of the things, celebrate yourself every single day, Rebecca, to, to build your self-compassion every day, celebrate the action you're taking. And if you're learning something new, give yourself grace to understand in the beginning when you're learning you may fall just like a baby when a baby comes out does that baby start running across the room if that happens we'll be we'll be scared <laughs> you like run away like no this doesn't happen right so why do we expect it to happen to us if we're learning something new expect there are going to be bumps in the road and then celebrate each time you get over it right okay well i learned this i i showed up i did this Whew. great then keep on going and celebrate it along. And before you know, your self-compassion is going to be grounded and rooted, but as well as your level of resilience. And if anybody who's listening to this, if you are an entrepreneur, you under, or if you know corporate space and you're going, scaling your corporate lot, you understand resilience is needed. Every single day, there's going to be something that's going to pop, something that's going to drop. And if you're a parent, forget about it. <laughs> every moment right so the more resilient you are and the more self-compassionate you are you can thrive in anything you put your mind to in any season of life because we go through seasons sometimes there'll be a season that may come up and you'll be like oh shoot this is a tough one acknowledge it but also go back to your self-compassion practices and say okay i'm built for this i am resilient i can navigate through this i've done it before this is not new to me. All of this is retraining your brain. So the more we talk positively to ourselves and we tell our brains, I've done this before. Yes, I have. Here's the proof points. So even that badass list is proof points. It's telling your brain, damn, she's done it like a thousand times. What are we talking about? Let's do it. <laughs> so I, I, get, I went a little bit over there, but I'm so passionate about this because I see so many of us, you know, seeking outside validation, mm-hmm. looking for perfection, and, and being so tough on our own selves and not understanding that self-compassion is what's going to build your level of resilience to whatever comes your way. Mm, that's so, so true. No, that's so helpful for everyone listening. And I'm sure they can take away some of the practices that you've mentioned as well and start implementing them into their own lives. I think what you were saying was really important in the fact that you can be analytical about your day, but not self-critical. And I think there's a big difference between like analyzing and looking for those opportunities where things could be different versus being really critical and saying, well, this wasn't good enough and that wasn't good enough. And why, why couldn't I have done this better? Better, like I've done it before like you don't need to look at it through those eyes just from an analytical completely neutral like okay how am I going to improve myself kind of perspective I was just going to say I think that is such a great point that you're talking about a lot of time we get too attached to certain things and not looking at it from that lens of just analyzing it it's just data what is the data sharing and how did, can this data help me to get towards your vision so everything is tied to your vision your mission and you so if something takes you away from it, it's just looking to say, okay, what's that? And how can we pivot? Yeah, so, so true. And um, when it comes to the women that you work with, what are kind of the most common struggles that they face? I think some the women I work with, some of the most struggles is just like everyone else. <laughs> Sometimes we go to that level of self, self, not self-compassion, but of comparing ourselves to other people on the journey with us. Because when you are a driven high performer, you're always after that chase, which is nothing wrong with that. I love ambitious folks. I love people that have that goal that we're going after. But sometimes when you're going after that goal and you're looking at how far you have gotten 
And whereas the other person have gotten and you're starting to compare yourself. So that's one of the things. So releasing that need for comparison and also the need to know that you may fall Mm -hmm. and it's okay. So taking the fact that sometimes if you drop the ball, don't beat yourself up. Say, okay, the ball dropped. Why did this ball drop? First of all, was this a ball that needed to be played? A lot of time we're trying to do, again, the comparison game. We're trying to grow our business, but because Sally has done all of these different things, Jane is thinking, I need to go do the same thing. No, you don't. You need to go back to your, your mission, what's important to you, and you need to ride that, that wave, not everyone else's wave. So that would be another one. And then I think another one, too, is trying to do too much, mm-hmm. trying to overcomplicate things. I'm, my whole vision is how do we simplify? How do we thrive easy? How do we go after big, hairy, audacious goals that just will blow your freaking mind? Because I love that, right? Goals that would blow your mind, but it's yours. And then we take that goal and we break it down into bite size. We break it down into manageable areas for you to be able to work with. And then from what I take them through is the practice I learned from when I worked for Capital One. And it goes into like sprints, right? Work on a scrum team. So you go into sprints. This is the project. We break the project down. We have checkpoints. How are we doing towards it? We're celebrating as we go along and we're iterating the product, meaning whatever your thing that you're working on, it doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to be minimum viable ready for the market. Mm -hmm. If it's ready, we put it out there and then we're iterating on it as we go along. And we're learning, we're shifting, and we're growing. So, so that's kind of some of the things that we do in there. But those are some of the mindsets there. But I think those mindsets are something that we just see across the board when you're working with very driven, ambitious people who have proven track records. Because a lot of times when you have a proven track record, when you have to go back to the ABCs, meaning the foundation, it's hard. Mm-hmm. Because you're like, oh, I've done this. I've led major teams. I've led sales. I've done all of this stuff. And you're like, no. You need to go back to the basics and understand what it's like when you're running an online business or what it's like when you're, sh- you're trying to move an organization. You have to walk the talk and you have to lead yourself strongly. Mm. That's how you move the needle. By you having that, you have to follow through, you have to be consistent and you have to have systems and processes and routines. You heard, I talked about it before, routines and habits that support the vision of what you, where you want to go. If your systems, routine, your habits, your systems and processes are not there, it's going to be tough. I wouldn't say you can't get there. You can get there, but you're going to have struggles along the way. Because once you systemize things, guess what is less work for us? I'm a mom. I got three kids. I'm busy. There's a lot of things going on here. So that means the system needs to be tight. Mm -hmm. And I need to know just the same way, pull back, Look at it from an analytical perspective. What's working? What's not working? Is it the right lever that we're pulling? Is it even leaning on the, the right ladder, leaning on the right wall? Because a lot of times in our businesses, in our life, in general, holistic view, we drift. Mm-hmm. You know that drift? Yeah. Like you start off the path the right way, right? And then all of a sudden you drift down and you don't even realize that you drift away from your mission, away mm-hmm. from your purpose. So how? Ha- how do we get back to your navigation where it starts, where it needs to be, and always pivot yourself because you know that you're on this journey? Yeah, I, I don't know if that answered your question, but I got excited on that one. <laughs> no, it did absolutely. I feel like business is constantly a journey of like pulling yourself back to your vision, but especially with the online world where you see all the social media posts from all the other people. Some people are doing this, some people are doing that. And then, as you mentioned earlier, like we feel like, oh, maybe now I should be doing that or I should be doing this too. So it takes us away and then we're like, okay, let's let's bring ourselves back and, and uh, get back in line with our vision. So before we finish, can you share a little bit more about the Level Up and Thrive virtual series that's happening from the 24th of October? Yeah, this is a, I would say, this project is definitely a project. I, I'm thankful for all the experts that are coming in because I'm doing this with 30 plus experts. Last count was like 41 experts. Wow. So, and the, we still have other people like asking to join this event. So it's focused on helping female entrepreneurs, business owners, leaders, coaches, consultants, folks that always giving to everyone else. Like we're just keep on pouring, pouring away from our cups, giving to everyone else. This is an opportunity for us to pour back into their cups, helping them to reclaim their joy, reclaim their passion, reclaim their energy. 
because mm -hmm. after the last couple of years, you know, it's been tough on all of us. All of us had to weather the storm. All of us had the opportunity to build our resilience as we went along. So we're in this event, we're gonna be talking about how they can maximize their profitability. Of course, boost up their confidence <laughs> as well as their, their profitability within their businesses. And at any event I do, I always talk about resilience because I think resilience is so important. And each of these speakers are going to be sharing practical strategies mm -hmm. that you can implement right away in your life and feel the results. And I'm big on just-in-time learning too. So I tell folks, you come to an event like this, you look at the schedule, you look and say, okay, what makes sense for me right now in the path I'm in? Lean in on that session, right? So if you're working on confidence and you might want to lean in on the speaker that's talking about confidence. What are some of the resources that they're giving on confidence? If you're working on being more visible in your business and showing up online or doing something like that, then you go to a speaker that's talking about visibility, right? So get what you need at the right time that's going to allow you to thrive because this resource, there's an opportunity that you can hold on to it. And then you go back to it when you need it at the right time. So just in time learning. So I think this is like powerful. You're going to get so many different perspectives. So if you are entrepreneur, you're a professional that's scaling the corporate ladder, you have a team, you're a coach, you're a consultant, this would be, you would get some nuggets in here that will give you the opportunity to take it to the next level and live that bold life of yours. It's amazing. I'm so excited to be a part of it. And I can't wait to attend because there's so many different, so many different interviews that I want to watch because I know that I'm going to get so much from it as well. So before we say goodbye, where can people find you if they want to learn more about you? So if anyone wants to find me, the good news is I keep everything simple. So it's Felicia Etienne on all social media platforms. You can find me on LinkedIn, probably would be the number one. You probably, because I Google myself and LinkedIn seemed to pop up first, but so, <laughs> you know, I'm doing, an ex I'm doing a training for someone. And part of that is to Google yourself and see how you show up there. So LinkedIn showed up. So definitely check out LinkedIn. I'm also on YouTube and on Instagram and anywhere there. And I also brought a gift for the audience, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they can also check that out. I think it's yeah. affirmations. The I think it's something around how to create affirmations that's going to help you to thrive. And based on everything we talked about with confidence, affirmations is a great way to build your self-compassion with yourself, to build a level of resilience as well. Yeah, absolutely. Affirmations is like one of my favorite tools in the world. So I will make sure to leave all those links below. And don't forget to grab your free ticket to the Level Up and Thrive virtual series. It starts on the 24th of October. Go sign up to there now and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for listening.